Yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Crooks209 back at you guys with another video. And today, we're gonna be using Pedro the Young Punisher Munoz. Now, I wanted to do this video because in my Piotr Jan video, I talked about this being one of the non-meta fighters that you can use against the meta uh, the meta fighters of Bantamweight. So we're gonna be taking on Rob Font here in this matchup. Now, we're underway. Now, with somebody like Pedro Munoz, we're gonna try to stay as close to Rob Font as possible because he doesn't have the best footwork. There we get a good counter in right away. Catch him with a good lead uppercut, drop him immediately. This is, couldn't have asked for a better start with Pedro Munoz, We posture back down. Now, Pedro does have, I believe, 92 top control against Rob Font's 90 uh, bottom control. So the stats are very close, but we should be able to do some good ground and pound damage with Pedro Munoz if we put ourselves in very good positions which we did right there, but this guy did a good job of getting out of the top mount. Now we're punching to gain that GA. And Pedro Munoz does have a uh, rubber guard off the back as well. So we're not too worried about if we get swept into full guard as he sweeps us into half guard right there. Now we're punching to gain that GA. We're not too worried because Pedro Munoz does have a 90 off the back as well against Rob Fonts, I believe 92 top control, 93 top control. So we're not in too bad of a situation there he takes backside good job we try to hit the get up he blocks that good stuff good stuff postures up now he's going to try to get some ground and pound damage off but i see that he uses his fight iq in this situation which is good he blocks the full guard because he knows we don't want to be here we don't want to get our back taken so we deny that transition right there so far so good we haven't taken any major ground and pound and we're able to get him back in our full guard here we're able to gain the rubber guard position here he doesn't go for stat guard so we take side control. We're able to sweep right there and get him into side control. Now we're just going to try to take our time. He goes for that cage transition to try to get us into side control. We block it. Throw a couple elbows. We're going to go for the knee on belly. He was trying to go for a transition, but we overpowered it right there. Now we're getting some good ground and pound strikes in, but we let him up. Now the reason why I stayed on the ground right there was because I just wanted to see how this Rob Font's ground uh, game was because I know that I hurt him on the feet. So it's going to make him second guess standing up with me and I don't just want him to be trying to grapple me all fight long. So here on the feet, we utilize that calf kick right there, which is something that you need to do with Pedro Munoz because Pedro Munoz does have level four. He does have a level four lead calf kick and a level five rear calf kick. So he has heavy, heavy kicks. The only thing that you really need to be concerned about and that we're going to be concerned about in these fights that we do have is he only has an 86 footwork. He's not, he doesn't move very well in and out. Um, so that's something that you do want to be aware of if you're fighting with him as we get a good rock off right there, rip to the body, hurt him. Now we have him hurt, try to hit him with that switch kick and knock him down, but it didn't do as much damage as we would like. So now we're, we're keeping it close to where we can bounce in and hit him at our range because Pedro Munoz is really short as well and that's going to be the end of the first round now we did do a good job of finding this Rob Font's timing very very quickly and we got that knockdown straight off the rip so that's going to kind of throw him throw him kind of for a loop so we're going to see how he responds here in the second round good slip straight right there by him he's being a little bit more aggressive trying to press the pace good knee to the body by him now we're trying to respond back. We need to try to time out a combination as he steps forward. There, I don't know what's going on, why that kick tripped him right there, but it is what it is. He's jab straighting. Now, in this scenario, we're going to try to work the calf kicks as he's retreating from throwing his one-two. They're catching with a good knee. That was a good sequence of strikes right there. Jab straight knocks him back. He goes with a beautiful head kick right there into a body straight. Hit him with the calf kick as he's retreating. Now we're doing a good job of just staying patient and instead of us needing to press forward he's pressing forward into our range so we don't need to be overly aggressive to get our combinations off we're still popping off that calf kick beautifully we're just taking what he gives us i see that he tried to throw that elbow so i ducked they're catching with a good three-piece combination hurt him again he's lucky that he ducked right there didn't catch too much damage good head kick right there by him but so far so good in the second round we've heard him He's trying to go with the overhands. It looks like he's not comfortable with the pace that we're fighting at. But there he cracks off a nice four-piece combination, which makes us retreat. Good pushing sidekick. 
So now he's being a little more aggressive. He's trying to get that, that rock back. We're trying to land a combination as he comes in. Good jab hook right there by him. He's starting to pressure. Breaks our block. We duck. Let our block reset up. Block that kick. Go down to the body. Then back up to the head. Try to catch him with a front kick, but he did do a good job of pulling that. So now this guy is being ultra aggressive, so we take advantage of it. Rock him again. We go down to the body, then back up to the head. Good pull counter elbow right there by him, though. And then into a straight body kick. And where that leg is starting to get really beat up. Look at the scarring that he does have as we rock him right there. Drop him. Now we have him in a ground and pound scenario. We're trying to get the dub here, and we're able to get the win off of that ground and pound scenario. Very, very clean work from us against the Rob Font. Uh, we were able to do everything that we needed to do with Pedro Munoz in that matchup. Let's go ahead and jump into the second fight that we have. Now, here we are, guys. We're in the second fight of the video, and we're going up against Corey Sandhagen. Now, Corey Sandhagen, he can be a little tricky. He's not as, as strong as Rob Font. He doesn't have the 95 chin that Rob Font has, but he has the length, and he does have very, very good kicks. So it presents a, a completely different... Uh, play style than a Rob Font. So here I didn't mean to taunt the guy. He tried to touch the gloves. He tried to touch gloves with me and I accidentally didn't touch him. So I bowed in a show of respect. So we're now we're underway. And I see he's backing up as well. Um, he's trying to retreat, which is really going to really gonna put us kind of in a bind. Because I, like I said, Pedro Munoz only has 86 footwork. And he's very, very short in his reach. So that could sometimes be to his detriment. There, we're able to catch the kick. We're going to push him up against the cage. So we can start ripping that body. It's going to be a little easier to close the distance. So there we go with a nice switch kick. We're not trying to let him off the cage. We're trying to keep him behind that black outside line. There, catch him with a good kick. We're working that calf kick even against somebody like Corey Sanhagen. Pop him with a good combination. Retreat as our stamina was low. We miss on the calf kick. And we need to be careful not to miss on too many of those because we can get countered. And it'll do heavy damage. And even though Pedro does have 97 chin health, you don't want to take the risk of getting flashed. So here we're just trying to close the distance. We're popping that jab out like we always do. He's throwing calf kicks back now. So he might have an opportunity to check a couple of those. So now we're closing the distance. Good job by him throwing a stationary combination. So now I see him trying to make the reads. So we're going to try to speed, either speed up the pace or slow it down by just a notch. So that way it throws his timing off. There we're able to speed it up, catch him with a good slip straight. We're circling out. We're trying not to be predictable with the strikes that we're throwing. He tries to go with that spinny heel kick to the head. Break down the block. Get a good calf kick off as we retreat. Good body teat by him. There we're able to launch a good straight off as he was in the animation of kicking. There's another good calf kick. Hits us with a nice clean head kick into a body kick. That was nice. So you see how we're not really rushing things because he's he's looking for to counter us as we move forward. But there we catch him in the middle of a kick animation. Take him down. Now we're in the ground and pound scenario, but we don't have enough head damage to get the finish. So we just posture down. So here we're looking to block straight off of that full guard transition. Able to gain the half guard right there. Able to take side control because he wasn't expecting us to go there. Now, we're just trying to maintain control here against Corey Sanhagen. We don't want to allow him to roll us. So just throwing some strikes out there to reset that timer. Now he's punching. We block that full guard transition. Hitting to the body just to gain that GA. We do gain it. We get top mount right there. Now we try to block that transition, but he was quick on it, so we weren't able to get it. It's one of the hardest positions to block transitions out of, I swear. But we do gain side control again. We go for side saddle. Good job by him blocking it. Now he's punching. He get, It's able to get sprawled right there, but there's only five seconds left, so I'm not really worried too much about him pressing us up against the cage. And that's the end of the first round. Now, we did do a good job of keeping the fight close, and when he did enter in range, we made him pay, and we are able to, to rock him, and then we are able to get him down and really just control him for the rest of the round. So that's something that we're going to try to do again here in this second round, but I expect him to make some adjustments with Corey Sanhagen and he immediately does by starting off throwing body kicks so we need to try to stay in range and potentially get a counter off like we did in that first against that body kick 
So there we catch him with a good front kick. Hit him with a good calf kick as he retreats. To try to slow him down. Launches off a good lead hook body kick combination. We break down his block with a good combination of our own. Catch him with that calf kick. Now I just want to get him aware. Like you see that he's aware that he switched stance into southpaw. Because he's that lead leg is probably getting chopped up of Corey Sanhagen. So that lets me know to double down on it. So now we're going to increase the, the amount of leg kicks we're throwing as well. Catch him with a good body kick, but he did hit me with a good combination to the head, so we need to be careful. So now he's pressing the pace. He retreats, tries to hit us with that teep kick. We try to go with the slip hook. Catch him with a good combination. Stun him right there. Go down to the body once, but we need to be aware of that flying knee that Corey Sanhagen does have. Tries to hit us with that spinning heel kick again. We hit him with a good calf kick. And we're just taking our time. That calf kick knocks him down. Good body kick, but we we didn't sustain too much damage just because of how close we were. Double jab and straighten into that block. Let him launch off his combinations. Try to slip uppercut. Catch him with a good jab straight. Hurt him. Go down to the body, then back up to the head. Then nice body kick by us. Now, I just need to be careful because he did throw an uppercut as I went to the body. So we don't want to get flashed. Catch him with a good combination. Stun him. Hurt him again. And we have him up against the cage. Knock him down again. A little bit of lag, but that's okay. We're in the ground and pound scenario right here. We're trying to get the dub, and he slips off the last punch and is able to reverse the cage position, which is not what we want. So we need to step back, really trying to time out a strike. We knock him down again right there, working that calf kick, just trying to create two areas for him to worry about. Hits us with a good straight lead hook combination. Now we're on the hunt. We're pressing. We're trying to get him to back up to the cage. Which he is doing, but he hits us with a good teep kick. That doesn't allow us to advance forward. We're circling off. Catch him with a good front kick right there. Knock him down off that head kick. Head kick straight, and we're able to get the dub. We, blo we broke the block just enough for that head kick straight to bleed through and just get that nice finish that we were looking for. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the third fight that we have for you guys here. And we are in the third fight, guys. And we're going up against Crusher Green and Jose Aldo. Now, this fight is arguably the toughest fight for somebody like Pedro Munoz outside of Piotr Jan. Because um, Aldo does have such a good chin, such a good chin stat in this in this game. I believe he has a 90. I think it's a 94 or a 95. And he does have good kicks as well. But the one thing that he does lack is he does lack a good switch stance. So we're going to be chopping at that leg, but we need to be careful not to let him check too many of them because if we do, our leg's going to go to pudding pretty much. And we're going to have to switch stance, and Pedro doesn't have a good switch stance. He only has an 87 as well. But the way that this guy is fighting, we're not going to be launching off too many kicks because he's, he's stepping in the pocket throwing hands, which we're okay with because Pedro Munoz does have that 97 chin health. But we just need to be careful not to just get in this rhythm of throwing right after he throws. Because if you do that, Jose Aldo has the reach advantage and he's just going to pop you from the outside. So we need to try to change up the timing, get this guy thrown off of his rhythm. Right there, we're able to avoid that kick, which lets me know we're starting to figure it out. He goes with a good leg kick. He sees that we're trying to chop at his leg. Good uppercut. Good body teep right there by him. We're double jabbing. Catch him with a good four-piece combination right there. Now we're trying to regain the, the octagon control here. Trying to get him backing up. But he does a good job of getting damage off that makes us retreat. There's a nice straight uppercut. Good body teep. Good jab straight by us in response. Good spinning back kick to the body. So now we're trying to take our time. But I know if I just continually move backwards, this guy is just going to keep moving forward. So we need to gain that respect with Pedro Munoz in the pocket. And Pedro does have good boxing combinations. He has level three boxing combos with level four Muay Thai combinations. So if we need to, we can start switch throwing in some knees. But we're just trying to use the boxing combinations against Jose Aldo here, because it is, it is a pocket fight so far. So we're just taking our time. Good body hook by him. Trying to chop at that, at that leg. But he's doing a good job of, uh, of checking a lot of them. Good body teep right there. Actually could have caught us to the head. So this is pocket fighting 101. This is what I try to tell you guys. This is how you gain respect against people that are just that just think that they're better than you. This is basically you're fighting their ego. 
when it's pocket fighting because they think that they have your timing down they're going to try to dictate the pace to you and so in order for you to get respect you have to kind of go you kind of have to go through the fire you know what i mean you have to gain that respect to get him to back up you see how he's just pressing forward he's not really too worried about what we're throwing and we get another we get a good leg rock right there which hopefully causes him to switch stance but he is starting to retreat just a little bit and we're able to stand we're meeting him in the middle of the octagon now he has to respect us for the fact that we got that leg rock so we've garnered a little bit of respect he checks it right there gets one of his own respond with a good combination hurt him right there tries to go with the head kick and catch him with a body kick as the counter calf kick him and that's the end of the first round now we did get a good leg rock in but he was able to get a leg health event on us just because Aldo does have those still checks. So we can continue to work the legs, but we just need to be careful that he does not check too many of them. Because if we become obvious, it's going to hurt us in the long run. So here coming out, we're going to try to keep that same pace, try to stay in his face, try to mix it up like we were doing in the first round. There's another good check right there by him. Gets him another leg health event. Misses on the body hook, so we hit him with a calf kick as he retreats. Hits us with a good calf kick. Right there, breaking through his block. Able to slip that uppercut, but it didn't give us damage. Because I think the straight actually hit us as we were loading up for the animation, so that's okay. Now we see how we got him on the retreat. This is where we want him to be at. We want him to be up against, or at least close enough to the cage, where if he does hurt us, we have all that room to back up. And try to slip off strikes that he's trying to throw, trying to get us out. Good four-piece right there by him. He goes with the same one. Good jab straight, so we respond back to keep him off of us. But now we're just trying to smother those punches. We're trying to smother those kicks as well. There we sidestep, get a good counter off. Good uppercut by him right there. Kind of stuns us a little bit. But very, very close fight so far in the pocket. Misses on the leg kick, but we weren't in range to hit him with an overhand with Pedro. Good lead uppercut right there on the last punch of his combination. Kind of stunned us a little bit. Now we're breaking the block down just a little bit. Now we're backing him up. So see the difference between the first round and the second round is we gain that respect by getting that leg, those leg kick rocks. And now he's, he's kind of being a little bit more tentative in this round than he was in the first. Tries to hit us with that, uh, with that, uh, with that elbow, but that's okay. Catch him with a straight. And we're just taking our time. Catch him with a good front kick. We're trying to time something out. Hit him with a good straight as he tried to leg kick us. We respond with a good leg kick of our own. Catch him with a good head kick into a straight. Double jabbing. Just keeping something on him at all times. Not letting him just set and try to launch combinations off at us whenever he wants. We want to get him thinking. Which is exactly... The position that we're putting him in we're trying to keep him up against that cage but he did major lunge off so we're going to try to get him there again if at all possible catch him with a good leg kick hurt him right there double jabbing into that block he tries to pull counter we catch him with a good front kick sit him down and we have him hurt crack him right there with the uppercut on the release of the clinch knock him down right there and we do get the finish with pedro munoz just a little bit too much damage for aldo to withstand right there but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I hope this helped you guys. If you guys decide you guys want to use Pedro Munoz against somebody like Jan or against any of the other Bantam uh, meta fighters, that it did help you guys out. If it did, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section letting me know how it did and how you were able to implement some of the stuff that we talked about in the video. But until next time, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Thank you guys for stopping by again, and I will see you guys in the next video.